I am love embodied and I am so excited to share that with the rest of the world. That is a love language. It opened my expansion and awareness in terms of love and these love languages, recognizing where you're at, what you enjoy. Touch was number one. Quality time, acts of service, you know, gifts is number five. Words of affirmation are very nice, but it's down there too. Hey, let me know when you get home safely. That's an I love you without saying I love you. Food is one of my love languages. Yes, we do need that pizza. We do need that pizza. Love is the language that unites us all. Even plants, animals, and people alike, we all understand love. As lovies, we kind of have our own love language, but we also like to use the love languages from- Of Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of Star Wars, especially R2-D2. Like, that is our jam. <laughs> but the other love languages, too- Oh, there are others. There are others. Crazy. <laughs> and they really help because- when we got together and talked about our personal boundaries and our guiding principles, we actually went through the love languages too. It helped us understand how we best like to receive love. Because ultimately, I know how I enjoy giving love, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's how you like to receive love. And it goes right along with help, right? Because, yes, it's so nice to help someone, but if someone didn't ask for help, are you really helping? Mm -hmm. Or are you just helping yourself thinking you're helping someone else, right? Yeah. And how do they feel when they're getting helped and they're like, I didn't ask for this? You know? Exactly. And so it's the same with a love language. And so the Five Love Languages book is a wonderful book. It gives us good parameters. I would say there's definitely more than five love languages, but let's stick with those five for now. Do you want to share what the five were that were from the book? Well, outside of the six being Star Wars, uh, yes, the <laughs> five. Star, Wars. Star Trek Two. Our streams cross. This, Hate to say it, but true. if it this has to true. do with space, I'm a happy girl. Yeah, space sci-fi uh, number six. Yes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, we have, uh, acts of service, you know, physical touch, uh, words of affirmation. We have quality time, quality time. Thank you very much. Just like we're spending right now. And I still have star Wars stuck in my head. So you're going to have to help me with this fifth one. <laughs> All right. So touch words, time, Acts of service and, and gifting. Gifts. There we go. Because we talked about that. I knew there was there was there. Yes. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, this is this is an interesting one because I know we. This was a great learning opportunity, much like many of the things in our beginning of our relationships. A lot of lot of learning opportunities <laughs> on my end. Learning. I love you so very much for your patience with me. Likewise, Pam. <laughs> yeah. It's not um, one sided. Um, but uh, yeah. So. For context, everyone, um, I really like, I like surprises. It's fun. I haven't gotten a lot of them in my life. And when I did, like, they're amazing. Uh, like my 30th birthday party, that was such a big surprise. I was just, I mean, still to this day, like, blows my mind. That was so much fun. But I love surprising other people. And so, and I like, like, rom romantic gestures, gifting, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So it took a little bit for me to realize that my love here, uh, that wasn't quite how she likes to receive love. I was so focused on that's how I like to receive love, so I couldn't imagine that someone else would not like to receive it in that way. Yeah, only child, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this was a good, good learning opportunity for me to get out of my own way and recognize that by learning the way that you enjoy receiving love is it wasn't a lack of it wasn't like i was devaluing you in any way it was just i was so caught up in the way that i receive love that i wasn't really taking in consideration the way you do and so it was really great because 
it opened my expansion and awareness in terms of love and these love languages, recognizing where you're at, what you enjoy. And then when I do gift you, it's not just some random surprise that kind of you know, throws you off. You're like, I didn't, didn't ask for this, you know, and even though you never questioned where it was coming from you. And that was one thing I really, really appreciate. It was never like WTF, like what was going on. You, you actually were like, Hey, I really appreciate the love and the care and the thought behind this. Cause I would, you know, put some time and effort into it, but to truly show you love, the best thing I can do is to listen to how you enjoy receiving love and then gift well not gift but because that's one of the five but uh to share in that way yes and what i was able to do was you know one I, we put them in order mm -hmm. when we talked about it like okay there are five of them so rank them in priority order of how you best receive and for me touch was number one, quality time, acts of service, you know, gifts is number five. Mm -hmm. Stuff for me can always be created and let go of. But, you know, and words of affirmation are very nice, but it's down there too. But to have the, the quality time together, to have touch those things are so important to me so i was able to pull from that the quality time that you put into creating it so it was important to me that you spent quality time but then when you learned that what i value most is what number one is on yours too mm -hmm. which is touch then things became really easy, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And it didn't have to be so complicated. Mm -hmm. But again, it goes back to something we've talked about many times now in our little relationship dialogue is we so frequently want to make others little mini versions of us sometimes that we even do it with our own love language. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I love surprises. Therefore, she's going to love surprises. Mm -hmm. And then we're so sad when someone doesn't receive it the same way. Yeah, which is so unfair. You know, I'll call myself out on that. Like, I was sad. But yeah, that's complete. There that was unfair expectation on my end for you to match the level of excitement around something that you didn't ask for. Yes. Which is fair. You know, it's, it's, and it's not like you're like, oh, you know, I hate receiving, you know, love surprises from you. Like, it's, <laughs> don't, it's love not, don't, don't, don't love me. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I want to make sure that's like put across. It wasn't, you know, like it wasn't received poorly, but it was, it was definitely not at the excitement level. And I was, I didn't realize the expectation I was placing on you to have the exact experience that I was like expecting you to have. And so, you know, and then it was confusing when it was like, if I just cleaned, you know, or vacuumed something and then I got like a crazy, you know, amazing excitement level. I'm just like, okay, this is not adding up right. Right. Because acts of service <laughs> yes. is above gifts, and right? Then, you know, math, you know, then it all, <laughs> <laughs> then it it all, all added falls up. Into and place. I was like, ah, okay, okay. And so, yeah, it was, it really shifted the dynamic of our relationship to recognize like, okay, it's when we have these conversations, we're able to talk through it and we're able to meet each other at that level. Then we are like the action itself is an act of service in many ways, right? It's, it's, we, it is to some level Like understanding each other's love language in and of itself is such a beautiful expression of love. Like just sitting down, taking the time. It almost kind of hits all five, just the act of doing it, which is quite fascinating. And so that's why I feel like it, it is something that is worth everyone exploring, seeking to understand, 
and then allowing there to be, like we said, more than five, you know, mm -hmm. like for us quoting movies, that's just a fun thing that we do. We love it. It's not one of the five, but it's up there. It's our number seven. Let's just say. Like, <laughs> how would that fit into any one of those? Yeah. Well, it kind of doesn't. So we created our own category. Exactly. Exactly. And so there may be that, uh, for other individuals, you know, maybe, uh, who knows? I mean, there's a, there's a, a ton of different work. Well, you can all can fill in the blanks on that. But the fact that we took the time to do that and we continue to, you know, that really, it eliminated a lot of the miscommunication and the expectation and the misunderstandings. And it just, it really allowed things to flow more cohesively and connected. And it's like a way that I, I see you, you see me, and we're just in a flow. Yes. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And for me, it's helped with friendships as well. Right. Just knowing the five, even though we may not have had a conversation around what is your love language, right? I still, I can begin to perceive that. And so if a friend, every time I see them, brings me a gift, well, gifting then I know is their love language. Mm. And I can cue in on that and I can speak their love language back. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not my love language, not on my top, it's like my lowest love language, I still receive it as them saying, I love you. And I am so honored and I am so grateful because that's their love language. And so they're in many ways saying, I see you, I love you. Yeah. And then they gave me an insight into how I can tell them, I see you and I love you. So knowing these really becomes a strong way to nurture a relationship. For us, obviously, touch is a love language in a romantic partnership. I'm not going to go into my business environment and say, all right, touch me all of the time, because that's going to get a little bit weird, yes. right? There are laws around that. There are. <laughs> <laughs> Most everywhere. But it doesn't mean that my love language changes. It just means we drop down to number two, right? Yes. And so we're going to honor that priority order. It's still important to understand the love language of the people around you in that kind of an order. So maybe we drop down instead, even number three, like quality time would be a wonderful way if you're in a business environment to show like, hey, I love and respect you. And so when I'm in a meeting with you, I'm going to give you my full attention. I'm not going to be on my phone and on my computer and answering a million email messages unless, of course, I have no other option and I've communicated that to you. But I'm going to set up meetings where you and I have quality one-on-one -on -one time. And that is my way of showing you that I love you and see you and honor you as the person that you are. Mm -hmm. And that's how love languages can be used in a place of business yeah. as well. Same with acts of service. You know, just even being able, some, if a coworker says, wow, you know, one of my uh, you know, a family member passed away or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going through a really difficult time right now, you know, X, Y, and Z occurred, you know, say, like, Hey, I would be happy to pick up these shifts so that you can take up, you know, time with your family or do what you need to do or, or get that, you know, get that time that you need. Um, so there are, there are ways in terms of acts of service that we could, or like, Hey, let me, let me take on this, a little bit of this project. And, and that way it frees you up so you can spend some time with your family because you've been working so hard and you're, you're spending time with your kids is really important, you know? And I, I mean, there's, there's little things like that, that we can do in, in, in work environments that can really support and, and connect in that way. Yes. Words of affirmation. Huge. Yes. Right? Yes. In a work environment. Mm -hmm. So if we can just share even a little bit, 
or cue in mm-hmm. like I do with my friends. If I see that one of our team members consistently shares words of affirmation, then it's probably a high likelihood that words of affirmation are important to them. Mm-hmm. So share words of affirmation back. Yeah. Let them know how you see their progress is going. Mm -hmm. Or in the kindest, most loving way, if there are areas for improvement, don't just tell them about the area for improvement. Also, share with them potential ways that you see they could take classes or go do something. Mm -hmm. So opportunity for improvement, opportunity to gain that improvement, Mm -hmm. right? So that you're not just leaving them hanging with, I see a gap, but I offer you no solution. Right, right. Yeah, like, hey, you do X, Y, and Z, phenomenal. If you can uh, improve this area and add that to the mix, like you're going to be unstoppable with the way that you're approaching this. It's like, oh, okay, well, now you're not just focusing on what I'm doing wrong. It's you're really helping me understand how I can grow as a person. And you're seeing me, the effort that I'm putting in, and it just makes all the difference. Yes. So in relationships in general, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to add to the mix. But I can't encourage enough to go beyond that too, to not put ourselves in a box Mm -hmm. where the love languages are only these five. Use those five as your base, Mm -hmm. right? As the like we're gonna stay it can't just be this for anybody who watched the movie hitch right you gotta move out of that box you don't need no pizza <laughs> just, just. our love language yeah. is movies really close, yeah. right we, we were completely transparent about that in quoting movies yes. so you have to be willing to break out of that box And add some of your own love languages in there and make them unique to your connection and share them with each other. So many times we also have unspoken love languages, Mm -hmm. inside jokes, Mm -hmm. like that one Mm -hmm. that is now not just an inside joke, (laughs) everyone knows. But we have these other little things that connect us and bind us So explore those, but make certain that you both know, right? Yeah. I mean, one of my favorites is, is, um, that's not necessarily in that five, but I, I very much feel is as a love language is when someone texts you or, or when you're in person says like, Hey, let me know when you get home safely. You know, that's. I, that's an I love you without saying I love you. You know, it's, um, hey, send me some pictures while you're on your vacation. I don't want to see, you know, that you're having a great time. Again, that's an I love you without saying I love you. So there's, like you're saying, cueing in on what the people in our lives are saying that sometimes may, maybe it's like, oh, that's that was weird or, or you know, or maybe a you're a kid and your parents like, you know, text me when you get home, make sure you get home safe. It's like, oh, that's annoying. Like I'm an adult and I should, I'm going to be fine. Yeah, I can like, get home yeah. on my own. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's not about like, it's, I'm not saying don't feel the way you feel, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's important to in parallel and also read where it's coming from. Cue in. Seek to understand, you know, if, if it is, if that's coming from a parent, it's probably because they love you and they care about you. How lucky are you? How many kids are in this world who are struggling, who unfortunately do not have parents that uh, show love or care in that way? Yes. And I will say food is one of my love languages. Yes. We do need that pizza. We do need that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> And I know it can be seen as an act of service or a gift, Mm -hmm. but to me it goes beyond either one of those. The love energy that can be infused into food is unlike anything for me personally. And so if I make you food, I promise you that is me saying I love you Yeah, at a whole different level. 100%. 
just point of reference for people that if you receive a gift of food and it looks like cookies, make sure you actually know it is cookies and not bath bombs because I these things looked exactly <laughs> like really great cookies. And I unfortunately found out that it was a bath bomb, which... <laughs> Did not feel like the most loving experience in that moment, but it was it was a wonderful, wonderful gift. <laughs> gift of love. Yes. <laughs> not no, love but... to the mouth, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just a little disclaimer there. But yeah, you know, when when you cook food for me or when I cook food for you, it's like I mean, it just it could be a simple meal. It doesn't have to be so elaborate, you know, three Michelin star, you know, restaurant quality, amazing food. It's it's already beyond that because it's made with love because it is, there's so much care and connection. And it's like, like when you make that coffee in this morning, like this morning, I was just, Oh my God, this, this is so good. <laughs> you know, the, Starbucks has nothing on this. And it is, it is like, I can feel that love. And I know every culture has that experience. We watch a lot of cooking shows and they're like, ah, oh, the number one ingredient is love. And you're right. That's not, necessarily one, a direct one of those five but when we do make food for others and we share in that way i mean that there's multiple of them in one and and then beyond at the same time yes and our whole mission is love so love language acts of service being part of this community is a huge, huge, for everyone who's listening, this is an expression of your love language. Mm -hmm. Listening to this podcast, being part of the heart leader community, desiring to align your heart with your mind, if you take the next step and you join the Suivera community and become part of that mission, which is to see the love and the heart in all of humanity and to expand that love within self and then radiate that out, that is a love language. That is saying, I am love embodied and I am so excited to share that with the rest of the world. That is a love language. Yeah. And so for us, our whole mission, our whole purpose is a love language. Mm -hmm. So well said. And love is the language that unites us all. You know, even plants, animals, and people alike, we all understand love. There's literal science behind it, which is incredible. There's documentation showing, you know, when you tell a plant, I love you versus I hate you, how it grows. We've seen with animals, uh, you know, wild animals even, uh, and uh, our pets, you know, dogs, cats, et cetera. When we show love, it just, there's, they light up. And we know that with people for sure. And so, yeah, it's incredible how much that, that language can unite us, that no matter what, physical language you speak like everyone understands love it's that vibration that is undeniable it is it is undeniable to all of us because it is all of us yes so if your goal is like ours and you desire to be a walking expression of love to be your own walking expression of a love language Hit like and subscribe here if you haven't already done so to continue to become that heart leader and then head on over to the organization that brings this heart leader podcast forward. That is Suivera, S-U-I-V-E-R-A dot org and learn more about what we're doing out there in the world. We would love to have you as a community member. 